All right, we're working again on the HP CLD15MCE. This is a nice uh, mahogany guitar. Um, <clears throat> it came the other day. I've tuned it up, played it up. I'm going to change the strings, and I'm going to remove the pick guard, and I'm going to check the setup. I may lower the string height just a little bit to get it down where I like it to be. Uh, the fingerboard is gorgeous. It's got these nice little inlays that are very cute, you know? Very cute. Adorable. Um, and the wood is really good. It's got a Fishman pickup. I don't care about this too much. I'm not going to do electric. Uh, but it's nice to have electronic tuner built in. Uh, and that's the wood on the back. It's just gorgeous. Just really nice. And it's got the little plastic condoms on here. On the back, we'll peel all those guys off in a couple of minutes. It's been inspected. It's a Harley Benton sticker. And it's got uh, strings on it. So, I mean, what the heck more could you ask for? Um, so we're going to just check all the measurements. And we're going to remove the pick out. God, I hate that. It's got beautiful wood. And they put this stupid looking piece of plastic junk on there. They should send it separately like other the, the um, orange wood people send you a pick guard with it that you can stick on if you want it makes it optional so this way we got to get our hair dryer out we're going to heat it up and soften up the adhesive underneath peel that off and uh, we'll peel this off and then strip it down and get all the the uh, excess glue that may be left behind out of there so we'll be back in a second and do that all right so we're here to take off the pick guard this is a pretty straightforward. I'm going to do is heat this up a bit. Just to soften up the glue. And then we'll raise up the pick out. And throw it in the bench. If you heat it up, if you heat up the glue, it kind of lifts up the other I don't know how much residue it is. I don't think there's going to be much at all. I think it's all going to stay with the pick guard. You may have to do a little cleaning up. So it looks pretty good under there. I don't know if you can see it yet. But if you let this get hot, it releases the adhesive. Grab a nice one. So all we want to do is get the glue to be warm and it's time to let go. It's got a little bit of residue, very little. And I can use the um, glue on the back of the pick bar to pick up the glue. So that's kind of it. And there it is. Pick guard free. We'll see if we can get the rest of the adhesive residue, of which there's just about nothing. There is really nothing. Now, doesn't that look a hell of a lot better than with this stupid thing on there? Um, you got beautiful wood. Uh, they go out into the forest and, 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 and kill a tree and then put a piece of plastic on it. Bah! Humbug. Uh, not a great idea in my mind. Uh, but anyway... We're free of pick guard, and we'll move on and we'll check the string heights and stuff. Uh, I'll get my gauges out and give it a look, and I'll probably drop the action down. Um, let me see my string gauge here quickly. We'll take a quick peek at what the string height is. So right now at the 12, yeah, it's a little high. It's up around 6 or 5. So I want to drop it down. I want to drop the action down. Uh, and I may try to just do a truss rod adjustment. I'll take a look and see how straight the uh, neck is. Uh, and if it's flat, I'll leave it alone and drop it down here. If the neck's got a bit of an arc, you know, a bit of relief in it, I may take some of the relief out, and that might buy me all that I need uh, to get the action down. And that's a lot quicker and easier to do than to... to uh, 
uh, grind this down. So we'll be back. Right, so we did check the neck. It does have some relief in it. So we may be able to just do a truss rod adjustment. Ooh, that fits right in there, nice. So if we do a little righty tighty. We're gonna change the strings anyway, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. <clears throat> Let's see what that buys us with that kind of an adjustment. See what it does with the neck. It's almost flat. I'm gonna give it another little tweak. Because we've got nothing to lose. If we um aren't happy here, we can always put it back. Or if we screw it up too much, we can always return it to its uh, original status. That's pretty close to flat. Well, that brings the action down. We're about down just a little over four there now. Let's see if we got any ringing. There's nothing there, so I'm going to take and uh, do another little tweak here. and see if I can buy myself the lower action that I'm looking for, oops, without having to get crazy. Um, there. Well, let's see what that did for our string height. That brings it down right to four. So that and I don't hear any buzzing. fixes our problem. Let's take a look and see what we've done to the neck straightness. And that all we've done really is flatten the neck. So we've taken all the relief out of the neck and made it flat and it plays just fine. So we've got to get a new set of strings. Uh, I'm going to replace these strings. Uh, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to put on, but I'm going to change the strings and put another set of strings on. Uh, and like I said, we've got the action down. We've got that pick guard gone now that was there. I may use a little cleaner. There's a couple of little spots of glue left behind. And I think I need to um, maybe hit it with some lighter fluid or some adhesive remover. Or just clean it up a bit. Um, this is a beautiful, really nice finish. You know, I mean, for a China-made guitar... Um, this was about a buck eighty-five, about one hundred eighty-five bucks, I think. I paid for this. Um, it's a hell of a piece of equipment for the price that you pay, and it has a really nice sound. Uh, we'll do a song after we get it all set up, and I'll do that as a separate video piece, and we'll put that up online also. So. I'll be back in a minute. i got to figure out what strings I'm going to put All right, on. so what we're going to do is we're going to go with the Diodarios. 11 to 52. Um, i got a bunch of 11 to 52s on different kinds of strings and stuff. But I think we're going to try the Diodarios and see how those go. They're a low-cost, low-budget string. So we're going to take these guys down and we'll put them in. All right, so now we're just going to pop the strings off. I did the, the other end. Um, 
I used my um, clippers. You got a grip on the um, the pegs and pop them right up. The other thing I'm gonna do, I've decided here. I made a um, independent decision that I'm gonna go black with this stuff. Um, I decided I'm gonna do a black motif. Boy, that's hard to come out. What the heck is holding that down? That's really, ooh, that's a tough one. So we'll take all these strings off, they're gone. And then what we'll do is take the, um, <clears throat> the bridge out and we'll hit it with some black magic marker and make it black so I'll be right back I'm just gonna get set up to do that kind of quickly I'm gonna grab a couple things and I'll be right with you don't go away Matt so we're uh, we're gonna get ready to do this I got Vector down the other end there my shop my shop buddy is awful busy straightening out his place Pushing some of his guys around <clears throat> and getting his space clear. Hi, Vecta. He's waving to everybody. So anyway, we needed to get a few things. So we've done that now. We need a marker. We need some tape. We've got the new strings ready to go. And what we're going to do is just lift this out. We'll take a look under this. No one... Um, no shims or anything under there, which is nice to know. And then we can take the marker. And we can go ahead and make it black. This is a nice, easy way to go to ebony. Low cost, high efficiency. Uncompromising. You can see, are, you in the, are we in the picture? We should be in the picture. So all we're going to do is color this in with some marker. We're going to be careful not to stick our fingers in the marker. And we're going to try to remain clean in this process. Sometimes I'm successful in that effort. Sometimes I'm not. Uh, so far, so good. Now, I've just wetted the whole thing all the way down. Um, sometimes if you start spreading too much around, um, you start lifting it off. So all we want this to do is to air dry. And we want to be careful we don't, oh, that we don't get the maca on the guitar. Because then we're up Schitt's Creek, so to speak. So let's get a grip. And get the marker free again. We'll keep our fingers out of the black. And we'll go ahead and do the poor man's version of the ebony. This is a, I think this is bone too. I don't think this is plastic. I think they actually took the high road and put a nice bridge in um, in these guitars, which really makes a nice crisper sound. It sounds better all the way around when they do that. And I think they did that. So this should all be dry now. Oops. And we should be able to lay the compensated side down where it belongs. Look at that. I did that and I didn't even get black on myself. Nice. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move. Hold on. Don't. Well, here we are back again with the HP. As luck would have it, I had a set of black, well, I had a set of black knobs, but they didn't fit. Uh, they were too small. But I did have a set, a whole set of black tuners 
that fit. So what I'm gonna do is swap out the chromes and go with the blacks and go with the black set. So we'll have a black nut, we'll have a black bridge. Um, I might even have a set of black, no, I don't have black strings. Uh, if I did, I'd put them on. I'll take a look, I might. I actually might. Um, but this is getting to be a, a fun project and way more than I had to originally planned to do. Pretty exciting. Fun, fun. So actually what I gotta do now is to take all these tuners out. So I'm gonna use my little socket wrench and loosen everything up and take these guys all the way out. And once I get them all out, I'll show you about putting the other ones in. I'm gonna use a piece of toothpick to fill in the hole in the back and make it snug, okay? Okay, so we're still here. We're still working on the guitar. The HB, the next thing we gotta do is take all the screws off the back and these things will all come out. So we got five more screws to remove and then we'll put the new tuners in. Here we go. All right, so I'll finish taking these guys off, and uh, we'll get back to you when we put the other now, ones What in. we're doing is just putting the new tuners in. I got the old ones out. Not the old ones, the ones, the silver ones. They're brand new, too. But we'll put these black ones in, and we'll snug them down. Oops, but a fuco. We'll just snug them a little tight, not wicked tight. Just a little tight and get it snugged. So the look of this is going to change fairly dramatically, I think, you know, to make it um, more along the line of what the heck I like, you know. Come on. <sighs> it's always something to make it exciting. All right, so we've got to get it started so that the screw is actually gripping. How are we doing? We're almost there. It's taking forever to get down to snugness. There we go, that's that one. So we got one left, and we got a lock nut and a washer. And we got the last of the tuners through, and the lock nut and the washer. And we'll get this up and get this guy tight with our number 11, no, number 10 socket wrench. So that's that. That's the this side, anyway. Then we're going to go on the other side and put the screws in the back that secure them. And I think, because they fit a little loosely, I'm going to add a little bit of toothpick um, to these. Let me see how this goes. We'll try the first one and see if it takes it well. I missed the whole damn hole. Okay, so, see if we can get that under the bright light of day. Let's see how that holds down. Is that fairly stuck? It's pretty good. Put these guys in here. And I'll get back to you in just now. Now that has all six of them in. And we'll see if we can carefully peel away the protective cover that's on here without scratching up. The metal is pretty soft. I'm sure these are China made um, that I bought on uh, uh, Amazon. Some time ago, I don't even remember buying these, but sometimes I buy stuff for a project, then I don't do that project of what I thought I was going to do, 
and I end up with extra parts um, that I get two years later, like today, like with this. Um, and luckily it lends itself to be what I wanted to do with this project, just as a coincidence. Not like it was planned out to have these parts hanging around for this. And we're going to go back over to the other side and just tighten up all those lock nuts. Oops. Clunk. As he gently placed the guitar on the table. So now we'll snug up these guys and make sure all our tuners are nice and tight. They're not just snug. Oh, I like the black. I like the black look. I like the whole idea of this. I'm really, really glad I did this and decided kind of on the spur of the moment that this was the way we were going to go. Um, son of a gun. So when I start a project, I really don't have any idea of where I'm going exactly. I kind of let things come to me as they come to me. I'm going to set all the holes so that they're pointing straight down, looking at me, and I'll know where they are. The next thing we've got to do is kind of decide back again on the strings of what the heck we're going to do for strings. This is a little rough up here, this fretboard. Um, right up on this top edge is different. This is softer and smoother. Um, again, it's not super quality. It's a low-cost guitar, but for what you paid and what you got, it's a heck of a nice piece. All right, so that's that. We'll be back in a minute. i got to go think about strings again. I don't know if I'm going to go with those Diodarios or if I'm going to go Martin. i got Martins. Custom lights. These are also uh, 11 to 52, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so everybody's 11 to 52. It's which ones? Which ones? Everybody's a custom light. Let's go with the Martins. I think we'll go Martin. I didn't go away yet, did I either? So let's just make a, a hole in the wrapper and open the wrapper and see what these strings look like. I forgot what they look like since I bought them. Um, here's the number six string for the Martin, the Martin strings. So if these are supposed to be good enough for a Martin, then they should be good enough for the HP. Let's come back down here, and we'll place the first string, and then we'll um, come back to it, okay? So let's put one in. We'll give it a little bit of a bend to try to get the metal loop to get the hell out of the way once you push it down through the hole. Okay. And that's tracing with the piece very tightly. This was the one I had a hard time getting out. I can stick my hand in the hole. Oh, there it goes. All right. I was going to say, because you can cheat on the first couple of strings, and you can stick your hand in a hole and get them up. Um, so let's go down here and we'll put the first string on and we'll see how the string light's doing. Um, oh, pencil. <clears throat> Hold on, we got to get some graphite. I'm going to back. I got my brand new Ticonderoga, my first pencil. This is for a little kid. It's a number two pencil that's big and fat. And what we're going to do is just run some graphite down each one of these slots. And that hopefully will make the string slide through here a little more easily than they might otherwise. All right, so that's the new fat pencil. So now we're back to putting this first string on. We're going to give it a wrap and then a wrap. And we're going to come in here with just two wraps and poke this into the hole. And uh, pull the string down tight. 
and then take the slack out of the string. There we go. Okay, so now let's get our winder and we'll take a cheap wind. Try to get some tension on this first string. That's the 52 from the Martin Authentic Acoustics Superior Performance, yada, 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 if you believe any of that stuff. So we'll find out about the Superior Performance in a little bit. We can do the quick, down and dirty, easy quarter trick just to see how our action is here. Uh, we're just touching that quarter, so that may be fine. We'll get a little bit more tension um, once we put all the strings on, and that'll give us a little bit of relief in the neck and probably make the string height to be exactly where we want it to be. So we'll be back if we get the strings. All righty, there's all the strings around. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, I didn't check the, um, I still I haven't tuned it up or anything yet. I haven't checked the action again since I um, put the strings on. But we'll take a quick peek here now with the quarter trick and see where it is. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So the, the neck has got just a little bit of relief in it. Um, and it's not tuned to pitch quite, you know, not quite at all yet. And we're at, we're at 464, which is perfect. So what we'll do is tune this up and see what happens. And uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, so we've got all the strings on now. We've got it all tuned up to pitch. I think this came out really well. We reset the truss rod to get the action better. We replaced the strings. We removed the stupid pick guard and revealed the wicked nice wood that's under here. We replaced the tuners from silver to black. We blackened the bridge. We blackened the nut. All of that for no extra charge. And it plays really good. We put a set of um, Martin authentic whatever strings on it. This thing plays nice. This is under $200 guitar from Harley Benton. Um, I know I changed some things on it. Uh, didn't need to be done. It did need a slight uh, adjustment for the string height, which I thought was a little too high. Everything else I did, I did just to suit to my taste. This is beautiful. It's a solid wood mahogany guitar uh, for under $200. I don't think you can beat this with a stick. Uh, we'll come back later on, uh, probably tomorrow, and we'll play a nice little song. We'll trim off the strings. The H3 swings really well. Wicked nice. Nice guitar. <laughs> 